some of the, the actors and because my brother is an actor and so like he started groundlings as a way to not because he thinks of himself like as this like comedy legend but because he knew it would help him with his acting just the, the improv nature of it and I know a lot of people actually discover it through that and like whether they're a lot of it out here is through the Groundlings program or Second City LA or Upright Citizens Brigade mm-hmm. but they discover that you know just the act of the learning like the yes ands and playing off of one another and and building it up and always trying to support the story and and lead towards something is something that they can bring towards any kind of acting whether it be drama or comedy and you know with your route I I know we've kind of jumped back and forth but like I believe you went to the groundlings is that correct yeah I did all everything pretty much I would say that's probably the best way to utilize those schools like I loved my training at groundlings I was on the UCB characters welcome team I guess I still am but then the pandemic hit and we would do different characters monthly which was great Uh, and I did all of second city conservatory and would like perform in a running show there I just never loved, like, I think it's better to approach it like, I want to become a stronger actor, or I want to gain gain some skills. And the reason that, as a pastime, I started teaching character classes now was because I just felt like these institutions, like, crush people's confidence and identity oftentimes. I'm not trying to speak in, like, broad terms about it. I think that there's so many great things about it. I just think people don't make a company and they assume so much about themselves that they might just not have matched a specific mold. But I think like the training is invaluable. I think we're also kind of departing from that. You know, it seems like as a result of the pandemic, a lot of people are like, well, I'm a pioneer in my own right and I make content online and I started my own school or, you know, whatever. And I think, yeah, taking things from each is really great. I just... I never felt like any one made perfect sense for me. Is that why you did a little bit of, of each one? Yeah, I mean, I think that's why I did a little bit of each one and started to make my own stuff a lot more was I just didn't want to feel like my only stage and performance opportunities were like the hierarchy of a school, you know? Right. So I think it's like I, I've loved being on a team at one place or I've loved doing a, sh- a run of a show at one place, but the industry's so hard already and it can yeah. feel hard when there's hierarchy within a company. Because there is a very defined hierarchy within those. I know yes. just within Groundlings, there's like stage one. That's the entry level. Everyone goes through it. And then not everyone graduates to level two. Like they'll keep you in level one if they don't feel you're ready or whatever. But then let's say you make it to level two. Then you're still like a level three. And then there's like uh, three more levels after that where you eventually you might end up on the like the main stage squad. Mm-hmm. And then from there, that's where a lot of people jump off to Saturday Night Live mm-hmm or back in the day, Mad TV, or whatever it might be, but it's it's a pretty clearly defined path. It's like Scientology. Yeah. And, it's, yeah. and I think like if it works your way, like that's great, but exactly. you know, in my case, no women made the company, no, no women voted, it was all white guys voting. It felt like a really corrupt system. A I, boys club. So you it had felt to like fit this, there. And I knew I didn't, and I remember like company members writing to me and being like, this is insane, we wish we could do something, and I'm like, but you can't. And And I'm lucky that I had built enough outside of that for that not to be, but there was a whole year where I thought like I shouldn't do this anymore, which is crazy for a 25 and 26 year old to be asking themselves that, you know? And so that literally, that's why I was like, I'm not going to teach character stuff forever. I was like, I just want, (laughs) I want anyone to take a class and realize like they don't have to maybe feel like one school is their identity. Cause I, I, I think it was a real mind fuck. And I think it, you know, it was also like, you guys got to update your system to be. And also it's like, I still am a white woman. And it, like, there were so many other people that had different POVs that weren't represented within that. And I think, I think this year really opened up a lot of schools eyes to that. And they're really trying to like change the infrastructure of it. But I hope that isn't just like a blanket statement to get press off their case and that they really follow through with that because otherwise it just isn't indicative of comedy right now. And I felt like I would write things and, it, and just in general, it's like, you just want to make sure it matches the zeitgeist of what, what's happening, you know, mm-hmm. otherwise it feels kind of antiquated, you know, but yeah, I mean, I think there's so many great elements of each school. I just think mm-hmm. there's no one school is the right school. 
Like yeah. if it fits for you, go yeah. for it. But it doesn't have to, and it's not going to. It's not going to be one size fits all. Is there a place that you can recommend? Like, let's say you don't want to go that path. Yeah. Are, are there like, so like for me, when I was learning filmmaking, a lot of what I learned, I learned on set working on, you know, big productions, but YouTube helped a tremendous yeah. amount. Is there something like that for comedy where it's I mean, kind of grassroots? I mean, the Lyric Hyperion was a theater I really liked and started to host a character, Mike, there after having done Characters Welcome at UCB with a friend of mine, Jensen, who's part of Very Gay Paint, because we felt like there wasn't a place for character performers to play without judgment or to give their, themselves permission without the competition, kind of inherently. Because that's the problem with the schools, right? Is it's like, whether you support people or not, there is still inherent com competition. <laughs> it's like, you're still trying to compete to get yeah, to a Yeah, there's thing. only so many spots. I think like some of these more independent theaters, and I also just think like, feeling free to sort of treat it like a buffet where you just survey each thing and then you kind of can take from it what you want. And I'm loving seeing people just launching their own shows and backyard shows and variety shows. And that's like a little something for everyone that I think helped me the most was starting to put up my own things that I feel like had a little bit of stand up and a little bit of storytelling and a little character. Cause I was like, that's how I feel as a comic. And I want to see that represented a little bit more. So I think encouraging people to go to those shows and then reaching out to peers that are there. I wish I would have done more of that when I was younger, but I also think it takes a level of, it's like hard to approach people you don't know. And anyone that does approach me now, I'm like more power to you. <laughs>